What's going on in the shed today? Well, there's going to be a bit of lathe action and a bit of milling as well. I got this offcut of 70mm round bar some time ago from an engineering place for free, and so I thought today I'll use it. I want to turn this into a huge nut and bolt. Now, I'm going to use this hex collet to put the flats on for the nut and bolt. Now, the hole in it is only 20mm, so I'm going to have some 20mm tabs on the end to hold both the nut and the bolt in that collet while I mill the flats on it. Now, as I'm only a self-taught backyarder, I have no idea what this steel is, so let's see whether it cuts. Well, it looks like it's going to cut okay, but I find that my little lathe can only take a one mil depth of cut at a time. So it's going to take quite a while to get from 70mm diameter down to 20mm diameter. Even with tailstock support I'm still getting chatter. Oh well, let's just carry on. Wow, well that took a fair while, but I'm down to my 20mm. Time to clean up the outside diameter for the nut. And a final light skim pass makes it nice and shiny. So while it's taking a while, I'm getting a reasonable result. Now, the next challenge is to cut through this 70mm round bar. So that I've just got a piece just for the nut. Surprisingly, the little bandsaw is cutting through this reasonably well. I can also use that turn down piece to put on the lathe. Because the next step in the process is to face this off and then put a hole in it ready for single point cutting later. Whatever this steel is, it's proving to be quite hard. So I'm taking my time drilling successively larger holes. Okay, that's the largest hole I can drill, so now I've got to use the boring bar. I've got to take this hole out to 38 mil because I'm planning to make a 40 mil bolt and I'm going to use an M2 thread. Well, according to my DRO, I should be pretty close. So let's see what we've got. Just using the guesso meter, I don't need to be super accurate. Okay, 37.76, 37.8. I'll just do one more skim pass and we'll be done. Now I'm going to use exactly the same process for the bolt. Time to swap the guesso meter for the exacto meter. And let's see what we've got. Aiming for 20. 20.012 mil. That will do me. So now I can turn it round on the lathe and do the bolt bit. According to the internet, if I want a 2 mil thread on a 40 mil bolt, then that bolt has to be turned down to 39.8. This gives a little bit of clearance for the thread.
I'm going to pause here and measure what I've got and then work out on the DRO how much more I've got to take off. I've measured 48.1 and I want 39.8 so I'll take 39.8 off it. My brain gets into gear and then I'll divide that by 2 to work out how much I've got to take off the diameter. Then just transfer that to my y-axis. Now I can just follow the DRO. I'm down to diameter and I want to face off the inside of the bolt head and I'm just using a button head for that so that I've got a nice little curve and also um, I'll put a, uh, a bit of a trench in there as well for my thread to run out into. There we go, all done. Order of operation always seems to be a key feature of getting things right. And I have no idea. So I've decided to do a bit of milling. I'm going to put the faces on the nut and the bolt. And I'm just using this face mill. And because that steel is pretty hard, again, I'm only taking a one mil depth of cut and I need to take three mil off each face. I'm doing the milling now because I didn't know whether this process would work or not. I wasn't going to waste my time cutting threads if I then found that I couldn't cut the faces. Like pretty much every milling operation, this is a slow process, so I just engage the auto feed and just let it cut away. I've got a digital readout on the quill, so I'm just taking it down one mil at a time. And it seems to be working reasonably well. Okay, that's the three mil taken off one side. Face. Time to turn it round one. As you can see, this is a pretty dodgy arrangement. Fortunately, it seems to be working. It's amazing how much grip the little vice has. Through the magic of television, I've got all faces done. But I need to take a little bit more than 3mm off each face and so I've left a little bit to just finish it off because that face mill doesn't leave a perfect finish. So I'm going to finish off with a fly cutter that's got a little button insert into it that I reckon works really well. Now I'm only taking a 0.2mm depth of cut. And again, just like magic, I've done all six faces. Let's have a look at what that fly cut has done. Yeah, beautiful. So it's the same two-step process for the bolt. And that one's finished as well. I'm not sure whether this is a smart idea or not, but I've cut the nubbin off the back of the nut now. And I'm now I'm just putting a 45 degree chamfer on each face of the nut. It seems to me that being able to um, single point thread by putting the thread right through the nut is going to be a lot better, a lot easier anyway, than trying to single point into a blind hole.
But of course I never thought about how I was going to hold it in the chuck. And after chamfering those edges it made it even more difficult. Anyway, I've got this bit of aluminium that fortunately is grabbing hold of that nut reasonably well. So I'll be able to run the thread right through without touching anything on the chuck. I've got to manually change out the gears on my little lathe. So 2mm thread is uh, feed speed A and then it tells me the, the gears that I've got to put on. This takes a couple of minutes but you know I'm not threading every day so it's no great big deal. All my so-called learning is from the internet for this process and I found the various depths of cut that I need to cut the single point thread. It reckons I can do this in eight passes so I'm just using the DRO to do each pass. But unfortunately I find <laughs> that this material is so hard I can't cut to the depth that is recommended so I've got to take smaller cuts and once I've got the auto feed set I leave it set and just go forward and backwards to do each pass to get the thread depth that I need I'm finally at the depth of cut recommended for a 2mm thread so I can take this out and I've got a reasonable amount of chatter in the thread but I think it'll be okay. Time for the bolt and at least I can see what I'm doing with this given that it's an outside thread. I'm taking much lighter cuts than recommended but I'm still getting chatter but it is cutting it so I'll persevere I've got to admit that this isn't particularly satisfying and not fun because I'm taking such light cuts but I eventually get to the recommended depth so let's see whether the nut fits. This is my first test fit of the nut. Now usually you'd find that it was a little bit tight on the first test fit. But <laughs> look at that. It goes on and it hasn't got any play at all. A bit of grit in there that I should have cleaned out so that takes a little bit of effort to um, just get past that but that thread feels good I'm amazed first time so the only thing left to do is put the chamfer on the bolt on both faces take that little nubbin off the back of the bolt as well and face that and theoretically I should be finished. There we go, that looks pretty. I've got a thin piece of brass sheet protecting the thread and with this and the amount of stick out that I've got it's not particularly rigid so I'm getting a lot of complaints. Rather than leave the head of the bolt just plain flat, I'm putting a little feature in it. 
You may be wondering why I'm making this nut and bolt, because it's so huge. Well, there's no reason. I just like the look and the challenge of building something so big. So it'll remain an object of art. And after all, who doesn't like screwing a great big nut onto a bolt? OK, that'll do. Looks better than a bought one. You might be forgiven for thinking I've finished, but I haven't. I've got jaw marks on three faces on the nut when I was trying to figure out how to hold it in the lathe. And I'm not happy with that, so I'm going to do the lightest skim pass over those three faces with the fly cutter. The gouge marks were reasonably deep, so I found I needed to do a 0.1mm skim to get rid of those marks. And even though it's made those three faces different to the other, visually you can't tell. And because this is going to be an object of art and not something functional, I'm only doing the three faces. There you go, all pretty again. It wouldn't be a shed project without at least one problem that has to be fixed. So, the only thing left to do is to do some screwing. Now this nut and bolt feels really good because they're so heavy. Very industrial. And you can see that nut slides on beautifully. So the threads are really good. I note that now that everything's cooled down and that I've given it a bit of a sandpaper, there's the tiniest little bit of play between the nut and the bolt thread. But this just makes it easy to screw and unscrew. So for a piece of art, I think that's good. I have to admit, I love the end result. This will be fun to play with. Thanks for watching. Catch you next time.